quality. Burning brings quality to my life. It gives me a chance to be wild on a daily basis, to be free. It shows me who I am at a very raw core level. It's just such a pure way to see the landscape. Just one foot in front of the other. My name is Jeff Browning. My name is Chrissy Mail. My name is Luke Nelson. And so I'm a runner. I'm a trail runner. I'm an ultra runner. When I heard about the project in Conservacion Patagonica, I wanted to come see firsthand the work that's being done to help this land thrive and return to its natural state. The idea would be to come down and use running to tell a story about Conservacion Patagonica. To run 100 miles through... Through the future Patagonia National Park. Through the Hini Mini Reserve on the north, and connect through Via Chacabuco to the Tamango Reserve in the south, connecting the cities of Chile Chico to Cochrane. It represents that we're connecting two ecosystems, two habitats for wildlife, and that gives you a, a northern habitat of glaciated mountains to the grasslands of the valley. And traveling through all that on foot is a great way to celebrate that connection. The importance of this project is to bring awareness of what truly is happening here. We get to celebrate a success. So many times in environmental activism, we don't win the fight. And here they are. The hike with Chris was, I felt really fortunate, frankly, just to be able to listen to her talk about the land, about the work that they're doing. Certainly could feel her deep love for wild places. When somebody asks me why here instead of someplace else, I say, first of all, just look around you. That's a hint. This was the opportunity of a lifetime to work on one of the largest grassland restoration projects in the world. I have a long history with coming down here in Patagonia. I first came in 1961. I thought, gee, oh, this is an incredible place. I wonder if anybody ever thought about the possibilities of conservation here. Patagonia National Park is a project we conceived almost 12 years ago now to buy Estancia Valle Chacobuco, see that the grasslands and forests begin to restore themselves and unite that with two national reserves that are contiguous to the valley. We want for people to get out and fall in love because you will not protect something unless you love it. Unless you go out into these hills and the wind is in your face and things hurt, it's raining, it stings your face, that's when you fall in love. Twenty-seven and a half miles, 27.6 to a little over a marathon. And uh, it's been pretty much all uphill, slowly uphill. It's windy and very much a strong headwind. <laughs> Ah, uh, starting to feel it a little. We probably yeah. got another 15 or plus miles of uphill. <laughs> and it might be breezy. I think there's a chance of wind. Yeah, weather forecast today, wind. On top of wind, with a side of wind, with more wind. <laughs> wind coming up your rear, wind coming in your face. 
If we're coming in your armpits and in your hands. <laughs> Valle Chacabuco fue por alrededor de 100 años una estancia ganadera. Entonces ya los dueños no pudieron ganar el dinero que querían ganar y por eso vendieron la estancia Chacabuco. En 2004, Conservación Patagónica acquired the land. The project was the creation of the park, but to make this a, become a reality, number of things needs to be accomplished. In terms of restoration, the number one thing you do in these kinds of landscapes is to get rid of the domestic animals, in this case, sheep and cows. It's like the old expression, it doesn't take a doctor to know someone is sick. It didn't have to be a rangeland manager and a field ecologist to see this landscape here in Valle Chacabuco was sick. I mean, it was a mess. It's night and day from what it was. In parallel with that, we should remove fences, which for over a century represent a barrier for some wildlife. 450 kilometers of fencing have been removed so far by volunteers. El paisaje sin los cercos es totalmente diferente. Conservación Patagónica se interesó porque es una tierra con una alta diversidad de las especies que viven en Patagonia, como el huemul, el zorro, el guanaco, los pumas. This park's one of its principal raison d'etre is to keep that huemul from going extinct. It's hanging by a thread. There are only like 1,500 deer left in the world. Trying to keep this nucleus intact and expanding is one of the focal points for conservation here. Empezamos aquí dentro del parque con cuatro hembras y un macho, y ahora ya tenemos alrededor de 30. It would do it a disservice to try and really put into words what we saw. We just stopped on our tracks and hung out there for a while. Valle Hermoso. Valle Hermoso. Valle Hermoso. Beautiful. Epic! The loot quote of the day is, my stoke meter blew a gasket. Blew a gasket. <laughs> It was awesome. So worth it. Yesterday we had the opportunity to attend a sheep shearing. They do that once a year, and the sheep that are on the land were chosen to stay a small group to produce wool and acts as an economical advantage for the park. I think yesterday's experience with the gauchos and helping shear sheep, do some of that manual labor, took me back personally to growing up on a farm, hard work every day, long hours kind of the camaraderie of working with a bunch of guys, joking and working with livestock. It also made me reflect too on how their way of life here is evolving over time. Creo que sí debemos mantener el tema de la ganadería porque es como culturalmente es súper importante. Es demostrar técnicas de manejo que muestren que uno puede llevar la vida silvestre con la ganadería. Once we're moving, it's not bad. The 
let's just uh, take a little break. It's hard to get moving the first 20 or 30 steps. Get a little creaky. A little creaky. <laughs> Things tighten up a little faster today than they did yesterday. Just in time to climb <laughs> yeah. Common Geekle. We got a big old climb, about a 4,000 foot climb up over Tom and Gito, high point for the day. And then somewhere between 10 and 20 miles of fun to get to Cochrane. <laughs> I'm closer to 20. <laughs> it's Sonic, it's gonna be awesome. When we have this park finished, when our part is finished, and the government is willing to accept the donation of the property that Conservación Patagonica has and all the infrastructure, we are giving it all away to the state. Personally, I can hear my biological clock ticking very loudly in my ears. <laughs> we have, uh, you know, a lot of projects to, to do and, and to finish before we're finished. We'd like to say goodbye to the world, having had a fundamental hand in creating national parks. They are the gold standard of conservation. They represent a good form of social equity. They belong to everyone. We're somewhere nearish 100 miles. We're kind of tired, a little slap happy, um, but getting close. Yeah, yeah, yeah. better. Um, we can see Cochrane. Epic mountains around us. Yeah, oh yes. Yeah. Continues just to blow my mind. We tried to motor a little bit, spending that last little bit of energy, everything that we'd stored up to that point, we could let it all go. And there's a high that comes from that, from pushing that hard and pushing those resources out of your body and the adrenaline that pumps. And then we drop into the final stretch and back into Cochrane and finish in the town square, which uh, has a, a way mule statue right in the middle of the park, which is I thought was kind of fitting. We ran 100 miles in two days, but we've been down here for two weeks. And there's all these experiences that led up to getting to do that 106 miles and make that 106 miles make a lot of sense. The more our planet expands and the more population booms, the more need we have for places like this to be protected. That is a must. I hope that this makes people think what they can do to keep their backyard safe. What is it that makes them feel connected to something bigger than themselves? Whether you're a trail runner or whether you're a weekend warrior dad, you need to use whatever resources are available to you to try to make a difference. Whoever you are, wherever your interest lies, Whatever you've fallen in love with, you get out of bed every morning and you do something. You act, you step into the fray, and you fight for a human society that is in balance with the natural world. This is gonna be a great day. They're gonna run up the Chilean flag with a lot of pride and joy. I've been around a lot of national parks in a lot of countries, and this is gonna be one of the great ones. Now I'm not waiting. No, I'm not waiting. No.